Welcome everyone and uh, good afternoon. Thank you for, for joining. This is the latest Scaled Agile webinar and today it's being hosted, uh, co-hosted by us at Agilisys. So we're going to be talking about this great new tool on the market that helps organizations manage their Agile programs um, and not just manage the PI planning but also manage the execution uh, of the entire PI. So having a live view of all your features, dependencies, risks uh, and objectives all in one place, right? So no more heavy PowerPoint uh, report, reporting. So hopefully most of you in the room will have either been through uh, a, a safe transformation or currently work in a safe-ish way. Um, so for the number of organizations that we've seen who do work in safe, uh, one common issue that we found um, is which tool is it that, um, that we want to use to manage our program, but also, which tool is, is not you know, overly taxing or have a large uh, admin overhead. Now at the team level, we know that's, that world is covered, right? You either use Jira or Rally or version one, et cetera. But how do you manage that at the program level? And how do you harness that data from the team level to help you at the program level? So we feel that tool exists now. It's called Big Agile. And uh, we have Rune from Scaled Agile and Darren from Agilis that will spend the next 30 or 40 minutes or so taking us through that tool, uh, through the tool. Now, as they talk, please feel free to use the Q&A functions to ask questions. Uh, we'll either answer them as we go, um, or if they are in full flow, we shall uh, save them up uh, and go through them at the end. So quick in the way of introduction. So I'm uh, Abbas Danani. I am a safe, uh, safe SBC and I've been running Agile transformations, agile coaching, a bit of scrum mastery for the last uh, 15 years or so. Um, and a little stat there, I've um, delivered or been part of 70 PI planning events uh, to date. It feels like a lot more. Um, so that's me. I'll hand over to, uh, to Darren to introduce himself. Hi there, my name's uh, Darren Emery. I am a partner at Agilisist. Um, I'm also a, a safe SPC. So I've been working uh, with Scaled Agile for probably around about four, maybe five years now. Um, my career's mainly seen me uh, work at a program and portfolio level, but I, I have had uh, been lucky enough to, to have a good deal of experience um, in the role of release train engineer, RTE, um, across a number of companies now whilst um, sort of heading up their safe transformations. And over to Rune. Thank you. And uh, my name is uh, Rune Christensen. So you almost pronounced my name right. And that's, that's, a, that's a big step in ahead. I actually didn't count the number of PIs I was in, but I bet it's, uh, it's, it's close to the 70 as well, if not more. Uh, I'm an uh, SPCT, so I get to train uh, guys like you um, in, in using SAFE. And uh, I've also been an RCE and can relate to some of the, the challenges and pains that we're probably gonna, gonna see here today. I'll share some of that um, as we go along. Cheers, Rene. Let's, let's... So in terms of what we'll, we'll cover, <clears throat> we'll, um, we'll, we'll do a, a brief intro first to, to Big Agile, what actually is Big Agile and, and who, who uses it. Uh, and then we'll spend most of the time talking about the benefits of using it for your programs, especially if you're a, if you're an RTE or, or, or related to the to the program level. And we'll talk particularly then about um, how it relates to PI planning, how it relates to executing the um, overall PI, and then how do we use it for MI information. So how do we measure um, and how do we improve the way that we um, that we use those measurements? And then at the end we'll have some time for some questions and hopefully some answers as well. So I'll hand over to Darren. Thank you. Thanks, Sam. Um, so we thought, you know, how better to introduce a tool than, than a few slides, right? So uh, what is Big Agile? Well, essentially, um, Big Agile is, it's a software tool that allows you to track, to report, to manage uh, your delivery program and, uh, and your portfolio. Um, now, we know that every organization works in, in different ways, right? Now. At the team level, your development teams, as, as, as Ab said, your scrum master, your product owners, they, they might be using Jira, they might be using Rally, they might be using version one, whatever it is. Um, well, Big Agile, what it does is it, it integrates the team tools through uh, APIs to basically provide an aggregated view of, of the work that's being done. So, 
you know, at the program level, um, your product teams, your architects, your delivery and program managers, they're able to manage that program of delivery to visualize dependencies and, and, and indeed milestones and just ensure that that product journey is, is being tracked appropriately. And then, you know, at, at the portfolio level, you've got your execs, your stakeholders, your PMO, and, and they then have access to a real-time data-driven uh, reporting dashboards that, that, that they can use to help them uh, plan the strategic direction uh, of the portfolio. And I think it's, it's quite important um, just to convey uh, why we built uh, Big Agile. Um, we ultimately built it because we needed it. Um, you see, we just we just come through a rather large merger between two of uh, the UK's largest betting and gaming firms. And I'll let you guess by the colours as to which uh, firms they were. But anyway, you can imagine it was a, com a pretty complex environment. So we had multiple development teams working across multiple brands, uh, lots of products, uh, multiple project work going on, multiple locations. And then we had you know, a rather large number of suppliers that we were working with um, and each of them were working in, the, in their own sort of way with their own backlogs, dependencies, deadlines. And, um, you know, to help manage this hugely complex environment, um, we decided, you know, we had to implement SAFE. And uh, as luck would have it, um, I was given the unenviable task of uh, being the uh, RTE for all of those teams. Um, now, I'm a massive proponent of SAFE, been doing it for a long time. We've, we've helped lots of organizations uh, implement SAFE, but we still uh, at this betting and gaming firm had a number of challenge, particularly around the execution. Um, so we continue to have some misalignment. And now, as you can imagine, after such a large merger, there's, there's a lot of people that were rather uncertain about the roles that they were gonna be um, uh, doing there was there was the blue brand there was the red brand and, and consequently there was a, a lot of politics at play which which tended to result in a, a little bit of misalignment between you know the highest levels of business and the trains and that really manifested in in, in a lot of changing priorities so teams would be working on one thing then pulled onto something else and you know it would happen all the time every sprint daily and it you know it was a challenging time the uh, the other thing that we had an issue with was was inaccurate data so we had that age old problem of data being out of date, data that was unreliable, data that you know, we needed from, uh, from a reporting perspective. Um, and it was my responsibility to collate, uh, to collate all of that information. Um, and we tended to waste a good deal of time trying to gather data from various tools and, and applications. And you know, it became quicker ultimately for for us to go to the directly to the source and of course that that meant interrupting teams and, and having them context switch from their work which you know ultimately re reduce their um you know productivity and despite safe and, and the great things that it brought in terms of, of, of pi planning and, and the program board we continue to miss dependencies and the, the, the whole uh, dependency management was 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 a huge challenge and we weren't really doing it very well at least um, you know, it, 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 it seemed as though, you know, the, the, the teams would, you know, commit to something and, and then it would be, would be changed and, and, and uh, dependencies would sort of come up and we weren't, wouldn't be aware of them. You know, the things that we planned out at the beginning weren't, you know, necessarily visible going through the execution. And it was, it was quite a, a challenging time. So what we did is we, you know, we did a bit of due diligence, we did a bit of research and we went into the marketplace to see if we could, we could have a tool that's going to, you know, help us manage that delivery, automate reporting and, you know, work in that complex environment with a lot of agile teams. Um, so after a little bit of search and we, we came across the, the leading, uh, one of the leading scaled agile planning tools, which kind of problem, uh, promised to solve all of our problems. It would connect into uh, our JIRA instances. It had snazzy reports. We could track those dependencies. And so ultimately we bought it. And unfortunately, it didn't work. Um, those multiple JIRA instances were a big problem. We had to get people over um, from uh, the tooling company to, to, to help us um, implement it. And it, they just couldn't get it working. We couldn't get a consolidated view. And so we decided we're gonna build our own tool. And, and, and that's the tool that became Big Agile that we're going to be um, sort of walking you through a little bit today. Um, ultimately, we built it because we needed it. Um, and 
as you can see uh, from this page and these testimonials, we, we've um, received quite a lot of appreciation from uh, some of the clientele that are currently using the tool um, across the various areas of the business, right? So you've, you've got Joe here um, as a stakeholder who is very much focused on the strategic direction and hitting KPIs. And, and then you've got Andy in the middle, product management, you know, needing to prioritize features and, and communicate the uh, delivery roadmap to customers. Um, and, and then, you know, finally we've got Mark on the, on the side there who was like me, you know, in a release train engineer type role and really needed to, to visualize the, the delivery pipeline, track dependencies and, and manage program risk. So very different set of personas across um, that we're kind of, you know, we, we built Big Agile for and that really appreciate it. So if I hand over now to uh, Rune, he's gonna talk a little bit through um, some of those personas. Right. So if you're just going to unshare, then I'll just share my part over here. Cool. That will probably be the easiest way. Like that. So I really love that uh, that little detective you put in there because that's actually some of the stuff we're gonna I'm gonna talk a little bit about here. And also the fact that you built it for yourself because that's also gonna help with uh, with gathering some of these things. And and these personas, these representatives that you show here, well, that's part of our toolkit really. So when we want to, to design really desirable solutions, then we want to focus around the customer as well. Well, we have design thinking that we're trying to pull some of the tools up that's going to help us focus on the customer. And personas being one of them. So uh, you're the tool guys, you like to show your tools. I'm the slide guy, I like to slow my slides. Oh, sorry about that. So I just want to talk slightly about these personas because it's so important that when you, when you design these kind of solutions that you really understand who is it actually you're designing it for. So you're not, you're not just trying to, as we as engineers do, like to think up solutions that, that may fit some sort of certain context. Well, you really need to reverse this and put yourself in the customer's place and understand who the customer really is. So using these personas will help us focus on the designs that we do. So maintaining a connection with our target customer, and trying to understand, you know, what is it they're going to use it for? What's the minimal viable thing that we can build that they're actually going to be using without putting all kinds of complexities in here? So keeping them in focus. And how do we get there? How do you do that detective work uh, that you saw? And, and we actually have a pretty cool tool as well inside our design thinking toolbox called uh, the empathy maps, where you're trying to put yourself into the shoes of, of that persona, of that user. And you can already hear from you, Darren, some of the frustrations that started to build up when you're in the position of an RTE and you know, you're trying to figure out how I'm gonna manage all of this. And some of the things we introduced in, in say 5.0 is this whole customer centric mindset using design thinking tools. And empathy maps is one of those where we're trying to see it from the perspective of our users. So who, who is it? I, I tried to put in here a nice little picture of, of the RTE that we're trying to emphasize with. And what are we going to do? Well, we need to get a job done. We need to get through our PI planning. We need to get through it in a nice and easy way. Well, there's a lot of things going on around us. So what do we see? What do we hear? Again, we want to build things that this persona wants and likes, not something we think or perceive they want. So we are that detective going out there to think. So where am I going with this? How can we put this into a, some kind of context? Well, I usually like to start with PI planning, that being the, the big two day event where all of things need to come together. We need to align, we need to synchronize, and we need to make, make things transparent at the same time. And the RTE is really at the core um, here. So that's us, we're the RTE uh, and we need superpowers. You need to be able to, as an RTE, to see everything at the same time, even though you're sitting behind the screen and all of the people you have, all the teams you have are all over the world, at least right now, everybody is remote. So, so I realized when I was RTE, I needed these superpowers to, to help me. You have PI planning, you have people walking about and you need to make some kind of sense of this controlled chaos that's going on. And you, you start to look around the room that you're in, whether it's virtual or it's physical, and you see our teams and you see the objectives they have and you see their capacities and you see the loads 
and you see user stories, but you have multiple teams and some of them are using the right sticky notes, some of them are not using the right sticky notes. So it's becoming more and more complex. I mean, in the, some of the agile release points I've worked in, we were like 12, 15 teams that you needed to have an overview of. How do you do this in some kind of sensible manner? And you also need to bring it together. What about all your risks? You need to manage those as well. What about your program board? All of your dependency, all of this red yarn going all over the place with features and enablers, and you have your milestones in there. All of these important things you need to be able to quite seamlessly manage. So you're standing there, you're in the middle of the PI planning, that's the RTE. So uh, we're the RTE, and uh, what do we do? Well, we're trying to make our way through with a successful PI planning. And we see, as an RTE, you see lots and lots and lots of information all the time, and it's changing, and you're trying to keep yourself updated all the time to make sure you have progress, Sure, Scrum or Scrums is going to help you, but I'd like to walk the floor myself, at least back when I had physical PI planning, to see what was going on. And you get, you get a bit frustrated because you can't be everywhere at once. So, so what I usually like to say is, uh, well, I use a lot of swearing, actually. I, well, you can't do that, really. So uh, I'd like to say that I really had too little time. I had too little time. I had too much to do. I had too many things to worry about. So I needed to make sense of all this. So I was feeling, you know, this is hard. How do I organize it? You know, how, how don't I miss anything that's crucial and important to make sure we actually have something after the two days? So what do I do? Well, I try to organize it. I try to use a tool. I try to use uh, sticky notes, those kind of things. But sometimes it just isn't enough. And like you said, Darren, some of these solutions that we see are maybe overly complex. So I spend more time on the tool rather than on the overview. And while you're making sense of all these things, you'll have people coming to you, you know, help me with this, assist me with that. And you're a servant leader as an RT, so you want to help. So, so what am I getting at? Well, I really want to turn all of this, and this even looks pretty. And I want to turn, to turn it into something like this, an orderly, nice fashion. And I'm really looking forward to, to hearing from you guys. How do I do that? Can you help me with that problem? Sure, I'd, I'd like to think we can. Um, so why don't we uh, walk through the tool a little bit um, uh, from the perspective uh, of, of an RTE. Um, I'm assuming you can still see my screen. Ab, just give me a nod if that's the correct yeah. one. Is that mm -hmm. our program Kanban that you can see? Um, if it is, we're in the right place. Um, okay, so imagine you know, I'm an RTE and I'm going to PI planning. What, what do I have in front of me? Well, I've got a, a whole raft of uh, PI candidates that are going to be heading into the PI planning. Um, they're all prioritized in prioritized order. And, um, you know, normally, perhaps as an RTE, I'd be printing these things out, putting them up on the wall next to a physical program board. Now, unfortunately, under the current circumstances, we, we can't work like that anymore. So we have to rely on a digital version. Um, now in Big Agile, we've we've got that digital version, and and, and what would happen is is the RTE and, and the teams and everybody would head into PI planning, and that program board would probably look a little bit like this. So you can see at the top, we've got all our sprints uh, with our sprint dates, and on the left hand side, we've got all of our teams. Now we've also got something quite interesting up here. We've got um, some unassigned features. So these are our prioritized list of features, and they're ready for uh, the teams to start planning them out. Um, so what you'd expect to see is, is your teams would pull these features um, into, their, uh, into their sprints. They'd start writing stories and, and um, putting them into, you know, perhaps Jira if they're using that, perhaps Rally. And ultimately what would happen is, is the Scrum Master would come into Big Agile and would uh, s select one of these features, um, such as this one, and they would simply um, uh, go down to the delivery area and make sure their team is selected. So in this case, we've got the Scrum Master from Scrum Dog Millionaire, and they're going to be uh, committing to complete this feature in sprint number three. So sprint number three of the PI, we click save, and we should see that feature appear in sprint number three. 
So that's how we deal with features in terms of uh, the digital program board. Now, we've also uh, got um, on the program board, obviously, the problem of dependencies. So um, let's uh, go and have a look at how those work. So what we do with dependencies, again, Scrum Master would come in here. We've realized we've got a dependency on another team. Um, we're talking uh, to, to that other team, making sure there's commitment around that dependency. And let's suppose that we need a uh, perf test environment um, to be set up. We can write the description in as we like. And it's the big assets team, the system test team that are gonna help us uh, set up this environment. It's gonna be needed in PI3 because that's the PI that we're planning out. And it's gonna be needed by uh, 3.2. Um, now we need a target feature. Um, now I think we just uh, put uh, the Oracle feature in there. So I'm gonna see if that one works. There we go, Oracle database update. I believe that was the one I put in. Um, and there's going to be a few stories that we need to, um, you know, sort of aggregate into one nice dependency that we can uh, put on the program board. So we're going to save that as our Scrum Master and head back on to the program board. And now you'll notice that there is in the swim lane of big assets, a dependency. And that dependency is now mapping across uh, to the feature that Scrum Dog Millionaire are building. So that's the kind of thing we're going to be looking at as an RTE. We're you know, we want to be seeing this stuff being populated because it's going to emulate us walking along the floor. And obviously we use other tools to collaborate with, maybe Slack, maybe uh, Microsoft Teams and the such. Um, but there's other aspects that we're going to, uh, to care about. Maybe there's some milestones. Maybe there's a milestone date. We need that uh, Oracle DB uh, set up for a, a big investor demo that we're doing. Um, and that milestone date perhaps sits into uh, sprint number four. So maybe we've got to select that in terms of uh, sprint number four. We select the date that that's taking place. What program increment is it? It's PI3. We click select and we can see a little star appear above sprint number four. And, and there is our uh, investor demo. Now, <clears throat> Uh, I'm going to show you some pretty interesting cool functionality a little bit later with regards to milestones. But the other thing we need to talk about very quickly is the issue of objectives, because that was on uh, uh, Rune's uh, screen earlier as well. So objectives are added in a very, very similar way. We simply click the plus icon to create an objective. We select the PI increment. We write the name of the objective and perhaps a, des a description. Um, and we select the team that is going to be delivering that. Let's say it's Scrum Dog Millionaire, and it's going to be delivered in sprint number three. Um, and uh, let's say our business owners walk the room and they score that for 10 points of value at some point during the PI planning. We can record all of that information. And we've got a nice cute little way of looking at those objectives. So rather than just seeing the feature plan here, we can also see a, an objective sitting in sprint number three for Scrum Dog Millionaire. They need to achieve a certain objective by sprint three. Remember, our objectives are supposed to be smart. There needs to be some sort of time aspect to them. So we can view them in that form uh, on this program board. So I think that's that's kind of nice for the uh, in terms of the PI planning. If I hand back over now to um, Rune and he is going to talk through a little bit about the execution of the PI. Thank you. I saw a couple of questions come in, so I uh, trust you can you can manage them. If some of them are general interest, then of course we'll share those. I think um, I think the one question is pertinent to be answered now. Um, uh, the question was: uh, Does this mean that dependencies are no longer entered on Jira or whatever team tool you're using, uh, but instead are all entered on Big Agile? Um, uh, and yes, is the answer. Um, Jira doesn't really have a great way of handling dependencies. Uh, you can link issues, but it's not quite the same. Um, so yes, we would expect all dependencies to be entered on, on, on Big Agile. And then when we when we talk about Scrum of Scrums later on, uh, we'll cover how those dependencies are managed. Moving forward. So just just to, just to add to that very slightly is, of course, in Jira, you know, there's going to be some stories that we're working on, perhaps, that are dependencies um, that we're delivering for another team. And we can include those like you saw me perhaps do very quickly on the tool there. We can include them as part of the dependency that we enter into Big Agile. Cool. So, so I must admit, you, I'm... I'm I was, I was brought up as an RTE and Scrum Master, you know, having the big physical boards with strings and everything uh, going. And, and you kind of go to enjoy that. 
uh, up until the moment, and, and that happened in real life, when I walked into the office as an RT, and my entire program board had fallen on the floor. Everything was just lying there. The only thing I had, that was kind of a photo I've uh, taken with my mobile phone of everything. And, and that's, that's when your world starts to, to, to fall apart that specific day. So I do like my physical stuff. There's certain situations where that's simply not a good idea. So, so I really love how simple this is and, and how easily you can get this overview and that the Scrum Masters themselves add in this information. <clears throat> but we're going to use it. I mean, PR planning isn't, isn't the only place that we're going to iterate on this. We need to, to work on it uh, as we go along uh, within our PI. So <clears throat> again, uh, when we have our, our PI uh, going on, uh, I'd always like to have uh, maybe two times a week, I'm having my, my scrum of scrums, and I want to have transparency into to all of the process going on. So I kind of drew up my, my scrum masters here, me standing in the back, trying to, to facilitate everything. And there's really three things that I'm, I'm focusing on when I'm doing these scrum or scrums. I want to be able to manage these dependencies, however few or many there are. And I think typically there's a lot of them. I need to have some kind of overview. Where are my dependencies? Where are they going? What teams do I need to focus on? You know, are things moving around? Do we need to shift uh, different things based on our progress? So dependencies is key to be able to manage that in an easily fashion. I need to have visibility into my risks and impediments. So uh, understanding where you are with your risks and various uh, dependencies, you know, impediments as well, crucial. So again, when I had this in my physical world, I kind of had my program board in front of me with all of the dependencies and features going on. And right next to it, I had my big poster with my risks and my impediments going on. And then I always like to go through all of the objectives that I had, you know, Usually I get my scrum masters to, after PI planning, making a big board with all of the objectives. What do you expect for, for delivery in what sprint? So I can kind of follow up on that. My milestones, I like that to be in there as well. So that's what kind of my, my visual room around me with these three boards, uh, pieces of information. And that's very well. But how do you do this when you're not able to be in the office? I mean, right now, even now everybody's distributed, everybody's working from home. Um, but even before then I was working with a lot of teams where you have uh, them sitting in different geographical locations. So as much as I love to have a physical thing, I need to have something to be able to manage this in a virtual and distributed environment. So guys, can you help me with that during the PI as well? I'd like to, I'd like to think so. Um, let's, uh, let, let, let me share again and um talk you through how we can how we can help with that uh, let's have a look again presume my screen is is live and i'm presuming you can see a program board uh, full of uh, dependency strings yeah looks good all, all good okay so we we if we remove those dependencies um, then we can see a nice cleaner uh, program board here and what I would do if I was an RTE, I'd probably be running my art syncs and my scrum of scrums, um, my, my PO syncs, and I'd probably be starting with the program board here. Now, what I've done uh, a lot, and, and really this, this execution part is the real reason we built um, Big Agile, is I'd probably run through each team in turn and, and get them to communicate to the other teams about you know, the, any impediments they might have, are, are things on track, are, are things looking normal? But we can see on this program board now that it looks slightly different. For a start, we've got a grayed out sprint. So that means we're in the current sprint. We're in currently in sprint 2.3. And as you can see, there are some different colored items on the board. Now you saw me earlier, I added um, uh, uh, some features when we were planning. Now you can see the features are all of those that are colored. All of those that have a filled color, they are all the features. Um, and all of the ones that have just a, a stroke around the outside, they are the dependencies. Now, 
the, the color is, is a rag status. So it gives you immediate view of where there's problems. So immediately I'm looking at this as, a, as an RTE and I'm thinking Scrum and Coke as, is uh, supposed to be delivering feature 44. It's in the current sprint and it's red. Well, what on earth's going on? So it can help us instigate those conversations. Um, and if I delve into this a little bit deeper and maybe talk with the Scrum Master, I can see, you know, actually we committed, the team committed to, to getting this done in Sprint 3. It's actually fall, uh, fallen into Sprint uh, 2.4. And because we're in the current Sprint, we're currently in 2.3, it's flagging as, as a red rag status. Now, I can also see that we've got a few problems perhaps coming up in the next Sprint. And we've got a few amber features. Now, these amber features... Um, the reason they're amber is because we've still got a sprint to mitigate the problem. So they're not quite flashing red yet, but there's definitely an issue. And this gives real great visibility for the RTEs and the Scrum Masters to see, you know what, my delivery's on track or no, it's not. There's a problem. We need to uh, make some adjustments. Um, as you can see, every dependency that I hover over, um, I, I will see which feature that applies to that dependency and, and that again instigates conversations. Now you'll, no, you'll, you'll notice that I added some, uh, some milestones uh, previously and you can see if I hover over these it tells us the details of the milestone, when it's due by and what features and dependencies are associated to that milestone. This one's of particular interest to me as an RTE. Uh, and if I click uh, the milestone, it will hold things in place so I can go and hover over and it will give me the title of each of these features and the dependencies. And I can then have that conversation around milestone deliveries um, and, and everything is nice and visible for everybody to, to see. Um, we also have the concept of, of objectives. You, know, you saw me add one previously. It's the same kind of rag status. So blue would mean complete, green on track, uh, red, we've got an issue. Um, but there's another way of looking at um, objectives as well. And I, I, I would probably like to use this way. It's maybe more what Rune is, is comfortable with. And you can see that I've got a whole raft of objectives here and we've got some rag statuses going on here. So very quickly, I can look at the objectives, see where the problem is and have those conversations as, uh, as, as needed. The final thing we talked about, uh, Rune uh, uh, insinuated, is that he wants to know how program risks are going. Now, one of the things I failed to mention when we were talking about the planning is we actually have this program risk board that we can, we can roam during the course of the PI planning. But the good thing is we can continually add more risks as we need to or move things about and uh, in, into the various roam areas. Uh, should we so wish. So that's kind of how we're using uh, the, the tool to execute the PI from an RTE and Scrum Master perspective. If I hand back over to Rune, then he's going to talk through a couple more things. Thank you. I like that way where, it, um, where you kind of uh, only see the dependencies once you start hoovering over them. I mean, it can become quite a mess uh, otherwise. So that, that's really neat uh, to do. And then you say you could add uh, more risk as you go along. Yeah, I know. Uh, good feature. <laughs> I hate when that happens, really. Yeah, um, absolutely. Oh, and I, I just have a, a tiny bit more that I wanted to uh, to bring um, because we uh, I understood in the beginning you were talking about metrics, starting to talk about improvements, and I was I was digging through my through my various uh, slide decks that I had, uh, because there was one thing that I, I personally is also into, always interested in. And I know you probably can do a lot more than, uh, than just this part here, but so I found this slide. And this is from the, from the product owner course, where you're having your estimation of your features, talking about you're doing some t-shirt sizing, you're doing some uh, refinement, and you're trying to be smarter and smarter as you get as you get to understand your features and everything. But there's also always one thing that really, well, concerned me. And uh, that was this little thing down here, you know, my delivery history data. That always seems to be a problem for me when I was, I was trying to get my scrum masters to update information, you know, right on the sticky notes, when did I put this into production? When did I put this into these states? Getting that data, where did that come from? Uh, so that was really, interesting to me and I'm, I'm pretty sure that I hopefully I can do some of that stuff and maybe having some other uh, reporting capabilities because 
if you have this in manual and you have this in post-it notes, you know, people, people forget to put it in or the sticky note falls down or these kind of things. It's just much more efficient to having it within a tool uh, when it would you know, want to do some automatic reporting. So if you're looking at, at the reporting and data extraction side, what can you, what can you give me here? Okay, let, let, me, uh, let me show you. Um, okay, so reporting and delivery was always a, a challenge when uh, coming off of that merger and the, the re one of the other reasons we built the tool um, because stakeholders were constantly asking those kind of questions. Um, so this is a slightly different view that you're seeing here in terms of the program board. So it's, it's slightly less maybe messy. It's a little clearer in terms of the titles of the features are very, very visible. We still have the concept of a RAG status. Um, and and you, you might notice if, if your eyes are good, then you can see um, a feature doneness percentage on each of, uh, of these items. Now, when I've hovered over, you can see this particular instance of Big Agile is, is at, um, attached to a, a JIRA instance. And uh, I, I hover over each of these features. I can see how many story points have been delivered against how many have been planned. The same for number of stories, which is quite useful as a very quick glance for, uh, for our senior stakeholders that want to make sure that they're, they're, the things they care about are on track. Now, the other added benefit of this view is uh, you know, very often they, they want to ask the question of, is this what we originally planned? Well, you know, I can answer that. And in this case, no, it's not. You know, we've shifted things. Uh, this is the original plan. We've shifted things to the right hand side, as, as can so often be the case. So it gives a little bit of um, uh, granularity in terms of, you know, have we been planning uh, as well as we could have things been changing? Uh, and this is all filterable based on, you know, certain products or certain projects that we that we might want to have a look at and, and dive into a little bit deeper in terms of a stakeholder view. But that's only one aspect of reporting. We've got lots of different reports um, here. Probably the most interesting one um, is, is uh, our feature progression. So here, this, this view tells us at the top here how many features were planned, how many have been delivered, whether there's any defects going on, same with the stories, how many were planned, how many delivered and, and story points. But what's interesting is we've got a little key here. So the red color means uh, we still need to do some story points to complete the feature. The um, yellowy color means we've got some story points currently in process in the current sprint. And uh, the blue means they're done. So we can very quickly see, you know what, this, this feature here, uh, the third one down, the fin planner, we've, we've actually managed to complete 40 um, story points. We've, we've only got 19 to go. And it gives us a quick idea of whether we might be in trouble from a, a stakeholder perspective. Um, and, and we can filter this by team. We can filter this by project. Um, another interesting one, when we talk about story points and, you know, um, getting some historical data, well, obviously Big Agile captures this data and it can communicate it um, for a, a long period of time. Um, all of these here are, 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 are features and this is basically how many uh, story points were originally planned in the blue and how many additional ones have been added. So very quickly, you can see this info research enhancement has actually increased um, it, its, its story points by quite a, an amount. And depending on your, uh, the way you set up your, your, your JIRA or your work uh, management tool, we can actually give even more granular information as to where these additional story points have come from. Is it additional scope? Is it you know, uh, increased complexity that we've, that we've found? Um, or maybe we just didn't in, uh, in, uh, estimate uh, particularly, particularly well. So lots of different reporting functionality that we can use. Um, in the interest of time, I'm not gonna dive into all of them, but feel free to ask a few questions. Um, I'm going to uh, hand back over to Ab uh, very briefly. Yeah, while you're doing that, there. So, so I, I, I like that thing. I've used when you go into a prioritization session before the PI planning. I mean, you're doing some some rough estimation about how big the features are, and you're, you're really trying to do your best guesses. And having this follow up, you know, really understanding well, actually, it was twice as big because we uncovered and surfaced some new things. You want to capture that thing for your next session again, relentlessly improve the way that you understand this, having reference features available to you. So I'm, I'm, I love, I'm loving this. This is perfect. This is easy for me. 
Good, good, good. I'm, I'm glad to hear. Now, I will just um, reshare my slide. Um, Google Drive is giving me a few problems uh, in terms of sharing, just, you know, just so we've got a nice placeholder for a few questions. Um, wow, okay, thanks, Darren. While, while you're doing that, then I'll, I'll jump in with some of the questions that have been asked. Um, uh, we've got here, uh, how long does it take to set up? Good tool, but how long does it take uh, to set up? Um, I can answer that while you're doing that, Darren. So usually we say it's um, between a couple of days and maybe a week, depending on your Jira instance or, or how many Jira instances and how many teams you've got, uh, we can get it set up pretty quickly. If you want to use it standalone, which you can use it standalone, uh, then um, we're talking hours then rather than, rather than days, but usually around about a, a few days to a week. Um, and the other question is based on what you just went through, uh, how does it know the percentage complete of the feature? So you just went through the, um, the feature and it said it was either 50% complete or, or some of them 100% complete. How does it know? Um, so while you're still sharing, I'll go, I'll go ahead and answer that. So um, as we, we spoke at the beginning, it connects to Jira using, using APIs. Uh, it will look at, so for that feature, it will look at the Epic in, in Jira. I'll use Jira as the example. It will look at that Epic in Jira and it will look at all of those stories. And the stories inside Jira can be a number of statuses, either um, not started, in progress, or done. And it will look at those, those stories and say, out of those stories that are inside that feature, how many are done? And then it works out the percentage from that. So it's actually a live view from, um, from all of the, the Jira instances you've got when you connect to many, to many Jira instances. Um, I'm just gonna click that, that that's answered. Um, uh, how many more? I've got a couple more questions. I'm going to take to that. Um, one of them was, can it show all the dependencies at the same time? But you managed to show that already. Um, can it connect to cloud uh, Jira uh, and on-prem Jira? It can connect to, to cloud Jira and on-prem. Uh, actually, it can connect to, to both at, at the same time. If you've got some, for example, on the, on the big merge that we did, we had some um, uh, suppliers that were on <clears throat> cloud and some that were on-prem on and we, you can connect to both at the same time. The only, the only troubles that you get when connecting to lots of different Jiras is if you've got projects in Jira that have the same name and the same identifier as another instance. Um, but let's hope that that doesn't happen. happen so just, often. yeah, just on that Jira instance one, I mean, we, the reason we, we built the tool in the first place is because other tools weren't allowing us at that betting and gaming firm to connect to more than one Jira. I mean, I think we had four or five and, and they were like cloud instances or on-prem instances. One of them was actually with one of our suppliers. So, you know, that's one of the things this tool does super, super well. Nice. Cool, and there's one more question. It's, a good, it's an interesting one. Um, our firm uh, struggles with keeping Jira up to date. Does Big Agile rely on your on your teams keeping their Jira boards up to date? Um, do you want me to, to do that one as well, Darren? You're good to go. You, you do that one, my friend. Yeah. You do okay. that one. Um, so that's <laughs> that. I. I the reason why I say that's an interesting question is because um, that was one of the things that we thought uh, would be a real a real uh, blocker for, for this because obviously it relies on looking at looking at your live um, team data and we know right, we've all been there as scrum masters or or RTs or, or whatever that um, when teams don't keep don't keep that up to date then you can't really manage very well. What we found with this tool was the opposite actually because. Big Agile is connecting into Jira and looking at Jira all of the time. It turns out that the teams um, actually kept Jira more up to date because of the tool was looking at it rather than um, it affecting it, it negatively affecting the tool. So um, I don't know, even if you don't use it to actually do any reporting, use it and it keeps the, the teams uh, up to date anyway. So uh, that was the last of those. I think one more question has just come in. Yeah, yeah give me a second to read it. From Alexandra, yeah. Oh yeah, so once you complete a PI, how can you export the data to see what was delivered uh, in regards to the extra story points? Yep, so we've got export functionality, exports to uh, Excel CSV. 
Um, so, so that's all doable. Um, the second part of your question, is there an option to compare the initial PI features versus delivered? Yeah, that's, that's what um, uh, actually happens is, is you, you, there's three statuses for a PI. There's a PI that's uh, in planning mode, and that's where you've got free reign to move things around um, and, and the RAG status doesn't get sort of implemented. Then we've got an active stage whereby the PI, um, the RTE will click, we're moving this to active, everything's been planned out as it was at PI planning, we're ready to go, and it, it actually retains the data. So it, it remembers the data um, and, and how it looked um, during planning. As soon as we move into that active, it records that uh, difference, and then we measure it when it moves to done. So all of that information we have and we can export and, and, and check into those things. And there's another, another quick question from Sergio um, talking about um, how many PIs and teams can Big Agile, Agile handle? I mean, I think, I think uh, you'll agree with me, Ab, we, we can handle as many PIs as, as, as needed, can't we? Um, the, largest, the, largest PI we've run, the, the largest PI we've run is, is 35 teams. Um, yeah. We didn't hit the limit. Um, and sorry, Rene, I know it's going against uh, the, the safe rules to do a, a PI with, <laughs> with that. Yeah, don't listen to this, but uh, with that many teams, but we have run a PI with 35 teams using, using Big Agile. Um, I, I think we've done uh, one, one of the customers has got 21 PIs. They're on PI 21 coming up. So, yeah, it's um, very capable. But let's just say that if you choose, not that I would ever, ever recommend it, but if you choose to have 35 teams, I definitely would have a tool to manage that for sure. I wouldn't put that on a, on a sticky note. That would be chaos. But <laughs> yeah, that's all um, I'll say about that. Part. <laughs> there's there's one, one more question just come in. Is this tool a replacement for Jira? Um, uh, do you... Do you suggest Jira integration with Big Agile? So Big Agile isn't a replacement for Jira. No, it's not. It's not a team workflow tool. What it does is it sits on top of tools like Jira and it um, integrates those the, the the teams work up into a program portfolio type level. So we can we can get a view of of the, across the piece across all the teams. Um, so no, not a replacement. Yeah. Well, Jira, Jira and Big Agile work in, in harmony together rather than, than being a, a replacement for one another. So I'm just, I'm just a curious type, you know, what's on your roadmap? What's coming next? So I think in, in terms of our roadmap, we're really fleshing out the, uh, the product piece. So you, you've got your, you know, your program Kanban that's in place, but we're going to start um, uh, creating an automated WSGIF prioritization. Um, that, that, that we're, we're looking into alongside some roadmaps um, uh, further into the future in terms of the, the product and, and where is it going. And complementing that at the portfolio level, we're going to be um, having a, 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 a little bit where we can sort of glean some more predictability around the team's uh, capacity. So we have an average team capacity aspect then what we can do uh, is, is we can see, you know, if we were to add another team of average capacity, how much more stuff could we get done at a portfolio level, um, which is quite interesting. Cool. There was just a comment uh, coming from, from Helen, says it looks really good, very clean to view. And I think it's, it, it, it's so important that it's simple and easy to use and you always try to, uh, I love that you've been an RTE so you can really put yourself in the shoes of the RT, trying to say, okay, what is what is that information I need? How can I really focus on that part and not seeing, you know, bells and whistles and buttons all over the place? Just I just want to see what I need to have, and that's it. So I, I, I agree with you, Helen, uh, about that uh, completely. Cool, appreciate it. Um, and you know, as you can see on the screen there, you know, please do get in touch. If you want a, a, an in-depth demo, then we can certainly accommodate that. And, and we do have uh, free to play environments if, if you're interested in, in, in um, using it with your own data and, and having a bit of a play around. Um, yeah. Cool. Well, um, it looks like no more questions and no more comments. So thank you. Uh, thank you all for attending. Um, it was a, a pleasure to to present this to you to you guys. Um, on behalf of uh, Big Agile and the Genesis, I especially want to thank Rune and Scaled Agile for uh, hosting the session. So thank you for that. 
Uh, and as you can see on the screen, if you do want a, a personalized demo or you want to learn more about it, then please visit uh, bigagile.io and um, you can book yourself a demo. Well, so thank it's you. It's been, been a pleasure. Thanks a lot, guys. Appreciate it. Thank you. Nice going. Bye.